Hello dear friends and welcome to another video from chesslessons.blog Today we are going to make a lesson on the French defense and actually it is a continuation of our previous lessons uh, of our previous lesson on French defense Today we are going to see another variation the exchange variation and actually it is the variation that is most played among uh, the lower rated players or the players who do not know much theory about uh, the French defense but it has also been played in, among uh, GMs, games and in some uh, variations it's very critical. Uh, I, I will go through the main lines and the main concepts of the variation not giving too much uh, emphasis on the exact moves but the plans you have to follow uh, through that variation uh, so let's begin the exchange variation on the French defense and uh, luckily you're, uh, you know that French defense is after e4, e6, d4, d5 uh, this is uh, the French defense and the, the exchange variation is after e takes d e takes d now many players uh, choose that variation because as you see there is a very similar setup on the two sides so they do not know, uh, need to know much theory of course there, there are some traps they might fall into but uh, I, uh, here making normal and logical moves getting your pieces out and completing your development you are going to be fine uh, and this is uh, somehow irritating for black because he wants to cre create some kind of attack some kind of uh, counterplay and this is exactly what i'm going to show you how to play with black that very similar position and try to create counter playing and imbalances so here um, the most common move for white is bishop on d3 uh, you see this has the advantage that white is not obligated yet to decide where to develop his knight on e2 or on f3 and the good developing the knight on e2 is that uh, you do not have to worry about the pin with bishop g4 and actually this is uh, why it is most played and you can try later to exchange your dark square bishop on c1 playing it on f4 with black's dark square bishop if uh, black develops his bishop on d6 we are going to see why you might want to do that but first of all let's see what black can play here so after um, the bishop on d3 the best continuation for black is knight on c6 and i will explain uh, why c5 is not that good move but first let's see uh, the knight on c6 because what I want to see you uh, to show you first is the right way of playing so knight on c6 and you see here we threat the d4 pawn almost always the white uh, chooses to protect it with c3 and you see now he has a very good chain uh, pawn chain b b2 c3 d4 now is the time for black to create some kind of imbalance in the game you see uh, by committing bishop d6 we have a different pawn structure the yellow squares and we have two pieces developed against the white who has only one, one piece developed and 
our knight on c6 cannot, uh, the white cannot develop his uh, knight on c3 and have some kind of similar structure. So we already uh, we have already started to creating to create some imbalances. And now white has to decide uh, where he wants his uh, knight on f3 on on e2. Let's see first knight on f3. And here almost always after knight f3 uh, of course you can play something um, uh, n uh, something similar li like knight f6 but I do not recommend you should try to create imbalances and now if you can achieve that by playing bishop on g4 you see you have a very nice pin on the queen White is uh, not uh, very anxious about it yet. He plays first king, uh, uh, castles on the king's side. You develop your uh, knight on the e7, knight g on e7, and now here is the idea I have. Uh, I want to show you. You are not going to castle on the king's side. Your plan is to develop all of your pieces to exit your queen on the d7 in order to protect the bishop and after that make castles on the queen side and try to attack your enemy's king side so rook on e1 queen on d7 uh, knight develop B4, okay, this move, uh, I haven't faced it many times, uh, only, I think only one of my opponents played B4, however, it is the, uh, the most common move among the players who knows the exchange variation, this, is, this has the idea of uh, playing B5 and threatening your knight on c6 and forcing it forcing it to an ugly square and this is why here black chooses knight on g6 and you see that i can now commit my knight on my c knight on the e7 and it's not a no court square and if white chooses h3 you can even try to exchange your light square bishop uh, I mean even even here you can try to exchange your light square bishop because white's light square bishop is better than uh, black's and of course you can uh, play bishop on h7 and bishop on g6 and if white is the one who takes on your bishop then you can open a file and this will be even more aggressive for your attack on the king's side so that was uh, the main variation uh, with knight f3 I have already mentioned that I, I want to show you only the main lines and focus on the main lines and after that you should uh, focus on tactics and end games because new players in chess cannot uh, win a game from the, o the opening yet uh, I think not even a player um, about 2000 rating points feeder rating points can win only from the opening he can also oh, he can of course get better now uh, instead of knight f3 here uh, white can play knight on e2 you see here his idea is to exchange the dark square bishop playing bishop on f4 and why he might want something like that the reason is that his light square bishop on d3 is a little better only a, a little bit but it's a little better from the black's bishop on c8 and this is because of the d5 pawn uh, because the d5 pawn stands on a light square while white central pawns stands on dark, dark squares 
which is uh, opposite of the square of uh, the, uh, the bishop. So he has a light square bishop and his central pawns on the dark square, while I have light square bishop and my central pawn on the light square. And you see that the pawn are fixed, so I cannot easily um, advance it or um, take it from the light squares. So, uh, a typical plan here for uh, black and one uh, I really like to play is committing the queen on h4. And you see now uh, if a player is reckless and rushes to make king, uh, castle on the king side, he will be mated on h2. But of course we do not assume that your opponent will do such a mistake. And here the right move is of course g3. But the idea after uh, queen on g5 is that now white has uh, some very serious weaknesses on the light squares um, while black has some problems in development he's a little uh, behind in development but the idea is to of course to exit your knight from g8 to e7 and you can decide whether you want to uh, press the weaknesses on f3 g2 h3 with your light square bishop or another idea is to exchange your light square bishop uh, because then the only uh, piece that can protect light squares for white is his queen so this is another plan of course uh, bishop g4 is an idea pressing uh, the knight uh, but you have to uh, see according to the circumstances of uh, the game. Bishop g4 is not always a good move. Uh, but the two previous plans uh, I mentioned are very good either to press the weaknesses or try to exchange your bishop and of course committing uh, castles on the queen side. Another move for black here is to play his queen on f6 and that has the idea of exchanging the light square bishop and then he can uh, continue like the variations before uh, so I think that it was everything uh, about uh, bishop on d3 let's go back then so here another very very common move is uh, c4 but it's a move I, I do not uh, like for white. Here, what you have to remember, and then you can find by yourself all the moves black has to play, is uh, that you have to finish your development. So, you play knight f6, uh, you do not need to rush and take on c4. This is going to be something like the queen's gambit, where you will take on c4 only when white uh, will move his bishop in order to make him lose a tempo and of course if he takes now d5 there is no problem at all because you place uh, your knight on central square and he's getting a an isolated pawn let me show you that so here um, the d4 will be a long term uh, weakness where you, uh, which you can press with knight on c6 the queen also attacks uh, you can even uh, get your bishop on g7 and attack the d4 so this is a very bad idea for white ok uh, here what white plays of course is not c takes d5 it's knight c3 and as I mentioned you have to have your mind only in development so bishop e7 b knight f3 uh, castles and now that white plays the bishop on e2 now you take he takes and it's very important to commit that move c6 in order not to be able to press you with 
uh, d5 or something similar idea it also takes away the b5 square from the bishop and the knight it's very 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 uh, important move Na uh, the pawn on c6 you see uh, you protect very well both your center and your queen side and um, I think this is all what you need to know about the variation white will uh, castle on the king side and then you uh, pin your his knight with bishop g4 this is a classic idea almost in all variations I say almost because we are going to see a variation in the con uh, in the continuation of that video where you have not uh, you must not rush and play g4 but uh, in general it's a classic idea to complete if, uh, especially when you have completed your development to pin the knight on f3 and then you can exit your knight like uh, uh, like uh, the green uh, arrows uh, were showed in the chessboard on d7 b6 and then on d5 to place your knight on a central square and have very very nice control over the center so let's go back and what i want to uh, mention after here is why c5 is a mistake so now that we have seen the c4 variation we can imagine why c5 is not that a good move so whatever uh, disadvantage why it had in the previous variation now we have it uh, after d takes c bishop takes uh, white is simply going to develop and now after knight f6 uh, you can see that d5 is a long term uh, weakness white can uh, now be the one who will pin our knight on f6 and the knight from b1 can press the pawn uh, from z the c3 the queen can attack it uh, at some point when the bishop will be removed from the d file and this is not a good position for black to play uh, as we already saw here the the best move uh, should be knight on c6 in order to press the pawn on the d4 okay so uh, there is another other very very common move especially among players who uh, do not know the theory very well uh, which is knight on f3 so we saw in the previous variation especially the bishop on d3 that white is waiting to decide where he wants his knight on e2 or on f3 and now uh, he decides uh, from the first move to commit the knight on the f3 so I will uh, generally uh, tell you before uh, showing you the variation that here you have the same plan with uh, bishop on g4, queen on d7, knight on c6 this is not the move order I'm showing you the places where you have to put your pieces the bishop of course on d6, knight on e7 and castle on the queen side so you have the same setup as the previous variation but it is important to show you why you have to avoid two very specific moves first and then I'm going to show you the main line I'm not usually uh, show you, showing the sidelines but here uh, I have to show you because many players might be uh, uh, might fall in the trap of bishop g4 immediately or knight c6 because of the previous variations uh, so it, now you have to know why not knight c6 the main difference now is that black can play his bishop on b5 <coughs> I'm sorry and now after bishop on d6 he has that very very powerful move pawn on c4 take 
pawn on d5 uh, I threat the bishop, bishop back I threat again the bishop and now after take and take now black has a very uh, very difficult position and very difficult advantage to convert he's up a pawn and the c6 pawn uh, is um, is going to be threatened by the knight of course uh, here white can uh, can always take on the a4 but I would recommend first castles and I had that uh, position with black sometimes and I had very very uh, great difficulty to convert the one extra pawn uh, so I wouldn't recommend for the black and you see these two double pawns uh, that pawn structure is very very bad for black you, you cannot um, do much with that pawn structure so not knight c6 after uh, a quick knight on f3 this is very important to remember and another move you have to avoid is the bishop on c4 now this is not that bad as the previous uh, but here white uh, you allow white a very nice plan first he's going to play h3 uh, there is no knight on c6 to uh, let's say uh, attack the d4 pawn and after bishop takes uh, to force white uh, destroy his pawn structure with z takes because the queen has to defend the d4 pawn uh, but after uh, the normal development moves now black has that idea of queen check on e2 you have to place your queen on e7 and now not exchanging the queens but bishop on e3 and that's the idea black uh, white here is going to play uh, knight on uh, d2 castle on the queen side and press you with g4 and now he has um, very very strong uh, attack I think that uh, this position is not that bad very bad uh, for black but definitely white has some kind of initiative here and you should not allow him to um, reach such, such a position especially when you have the ability uh, to uh, not to allow him and play different uh, holding uh, being you uh, the one who holds the initiative or at least the attack so here after knight f3 you have in your mind the previous setup and with that in mind you place your bishop on d6 now you see that uh, there is nothing attacking your pawn on d5 okay and you want to first exit your bishop on d3 because after a possible knight on c3 you can now defend your pawn with knight g on e7 protecting your pawn and uh, completing your previous uh, plan with knight on e7 bishop on g4 i can make arrows na uh, queen on d7 and no <laughs> and knight on c6 and castles on the queen side so here that must be the plan and what you have to remember is that you first exit your bishop in order to play knight g on e7 and uh, not closing your bishop because if you play something um like here now uh, after that you cannot play here because your bishop is being closed on f8 so bishop on d6 bishop on d3 and here we get the previous variation uh, we analyzed in uh, our very first example so this was all about the French defense uh, exchange variation I'm going also to make a full DVD about the French, uh, uh, vari the French uh, defense, where I will uh, I will make explanations of all the variations, not only the main lines. 
if you are interested you can contact me on uh, the email you see now on your uh, screens so what I want also to mention is that on our channel you can find many many videos both on openings and on end games and of course on strategy you can see here all my videos and of course they are stored on playlist to find easier and if you're interested in these videos please subscribe on my channel you can also press the red button uh, on the bottom left of the video subscribe uh, so in my channel in order to get notified for for the new videos and you can also press the little bell to get notified when a new video is uh, being uploaded up here on your YouTube channel and on your YouTube sorry account and you can also uh, visit my uh, site where I have all uh, the new stuff being uploaded under here and you can find much much more useful content you can also use the uh, chess24 site if you want to play online i use that platform so we can have some game to, uh, together and until the next time i hope all of you to be good and keep playing chess bye guys